everyone, what's going on? This video is all about palpating bony landmarks. So stay tuned because I promise you it's going to be a awesome, educational, and humorous video. Y'all like those puns? Because I got a lot more coming your way. Lego. Hey everyone, what's going on? It's great to connect with you again, but if you're new here, my name is Justin Lee, doctor, physical therapy student, and fitness coach. Here you'll find videos on fitness, physical therapy, and lifestyle that helps inspire self-change. I truly believe that not only lifting others, but lifting weights can empower greatness and encourage excellence. So, whatever journey that you're in, I'm here to believe in you and I'm here to lift you up. Change people, change people. That's why we live for change people. If any of this resonates with you, feel free to subscribe and hit those notifications. So this video is gonna be going over the main bony landmarks for the upper and lower extremities. I'm not gonna go through every single bony landmark cause no bony's got time for that. So if you need a quick reference on which bony landmark I'm going to be going over, I'm going to be putting the timestamp and the bony landmark in the description. Alright, so before we get into bony landmarks, we have to have a good understanding of anatomical directions. Now, something like anterior, posterior, inferior, lateral, all of that stuff, like if you are not clear with that, let me know in the comments so I can definitely make that video for you to clarify. But if you are familiar, we're just going to go over it just really quick, okay? so. In a, every medical professional has what's called the anatomical position, and that looks like this. Your palms are forward, your feet are out together, oh, you can see this. Your feet are out together like so, and this is what we call the anatomical position. So now at this point, we have different directions, right? So now we know the shoulder is what's called more superior than the elbow. So let's just take the knee for example, okay? So if you have the knee and you go above the knee, that's called superior. If you go below knee, that's called inferior. That kind of made me a little hungry. If you have more towards the midline, that's called medial. And then more towards the outside, that's called lateral. Now, when it comes to extremities, we have what's called distal and proximal, okay? So the extremities, if it's further away, we call that distal, like distance. And if it's closer to the middle, that's called proximal. And lastly, we have what's called anterior and posterior. So that basically means if it's more in front of the body, that's anterior, and more behind the body, that's posterior. So my chest is anterior to my midline, and then my glutes are posterior to my midline. By the way, did y'all catch that funny joke? <laughs> so many puns already. Trust me, we got a lot more in this video. If you guys have been liking this video so far, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. If you have any questions along the video, go ahead and remember to comment below. And if you're getting a lot of value from this video, feel free to share this video on any social platforms or any forums like Doctor of Student Network or anything like that. Okay, let's get down to business. Let's get down to business. All right, so I'm gonna break this video up into two parts. First, we're gonna be covering the upper extremity and then we're gonna be covering ooh, the lower extremity, okay? Now, those of you who know me, I love the PhysioU apps. They're great, they're convenient, easy to access on your phone, tablet, uh, the laptop, or whatever console that you use. They make it easily accessible. And they actually have an app, what's called the range of motion, palpation. It has all MMTs, it has all of that. So I'm gonna be covering the palpation portion in that app, and we're actually gonna be using that. The app using that. <laughs> I'm already rhyming, punning, what's going on? So, it's really great because in that app, and especially with the palpations, it not only shows you a video, but it also shows you explanations, directions, associated pathologies, and then also they provide a video link. So every single anatomical structure, bony landmark that we are going to go over today, I'm gonna to be providing a video link for you guys to check out. So if you guys need a little bit more information or follow up on what that bony landmark is, you guys can click that in the description as well. All right, let's go ahead and start with the scapula, AKA the scap for short, okay? Now I'm gonna be holding this and we're gonna be using this and my body, but just know that this is a left scapula, which is my left side. Now the scapula sits posterior, right, to the body, and then this middle part, what's called the medial border, and I'll go over that later, 
is closest to the spine. So you always need to know like uh, where you are on your body when we're talking about this. Okay, so since we're on this road trip, we're gonna start right here on this edge. It's a, you feel this bump and then it kind of comes and it's a flat surface. That's what's called the AC joint, the acromioclavicular joint. And that's gonna be right here. Now, if you follow along this joint, you can feel this ridge and that's called the spine of the scapula. So the car sits on that landing strip and it's gonna follow this down all the way to the spine of the scapula. And then once you get to what's called the medial border, the car is gonna stop. Stop. Scap. Stop. That was my attempt at this pun. Anyway, so, so this car is gonna go and it's gonna scap at the medial part of the border, right? So this is the medial border. And then this part is what's called the inferior angle, okay? So now on your body, when you palpate, you have that AC joint. You're gonna follow it down and you're gonna feel this bony ridge, right? And that's the spine of the scap. Then when you follow it all the way until you scap, where it stops, right? The medial border. And then if you follow it all the way down, you'll find that inferior angle. In attempting to palpate the inferior angle of the scapula, I'm going to come from a inferior position and almost use my pinching grip to come in and find that medial border. And as it loops around into the lateral border, I can almost use this area to feel that angle right there in that position. If I am not sure, I can cradle the arm and actually move the arm into flexion and I can feel that angle upwardly rotate, helping me to identify specifically that inferior angle of the scapula. Okay, so now let's move on to something a little bit more funny, the humerus. All right, so the humerus has a couple key bony landmarks that you guys should be aware of. Now, just so you know, the humerus sits like this and you have the scapula and this is where they articulate, right? And then there are a couple key bony landmarks, especially on the more proximal side of the bone, especially on these ridges. Now you can feel this on yourself and it's just, you can go to that AC joint and then you just go down and you feel a little bit of a uh, bone, okay? Like a little bony bump right there, okay? And that's what we call the greater tubercle. And the greater tubercle is the one that is right over here. It's more lateral, I guess, on the humerus. And then as you go and then you follow it a little bit more anterior, you're gonna feel a little divot and then another bump. Now that divot is what we call the intertubercular groove. And then the little bump is called the lesser tubercle. Now the greater and lesser tubercle, this is where the, uh, um, the rotator cuff muscles attach. Okay, so that's really important to help internal and external rotation. And then in that little groove, you have what's called the biceps tendon that goes up, the long head of the biceps tendon that goes up through that groove. So if you find that bump lateral, you find the greater tubercle and you find the little groove dip in. If you have your arm and then you pronate and supinate, so keep your elbow, keep your elbow by your side, and you pronate and supinate, you'll feel a little muscle or something move under there, and that's the biceps tendon. All right, so we have the scapula, we looked up the shoulder and we have the humerus. So now we're gonna go down and we're gonna go into the elbow over here. Now, if you go medial, remember this is the anatomical position, so this side is medial. If you go down here, you'll, feel, you'll follow it down and you feel a nice little bump right here. That is what we call the medial epicondyle. Now the medial epicondyle and then if you follow it just posterior to the back, you'll feel your elbow, right? So you have put one finger on the medial epicondyle and then put one hand on the elbow, what's called the olecranon process. Now in between, you'll feel a little groove over there, okay? Now some of you might feel some tingling. That's what's called the ulnar groove and you'll see that just go right in between there. So the ulnar groove is where the ulnar nerve runs through and it goes into the distribution of the hand. Now some of you call this the funny bone, right? If you hit it, it's like, ah, my fingers. But you can also, if you feel that little tunnel, 
You can also tap it like this and you'll feel the zinging go down your hands and go especially to the last two fingers, especially on the palmer side or maybe even the dorsal side as well. Now, of course, as you go down from the elbow, you can go down into the bones. You have the radius and the ulna, but I'm ulna going to talk about the elbow and not go down to the wrist. So that's it for the upper extremity. Now let's move on to the lower extremity. All right, I gotta back up a little bit. So we're gonna start off at our hips. Do y'all think I'm pretty hip yet? <laughs> oh, come on, I'm just trying to build our French hip. <laughs> or maybe even a relation hip. <laughs> oh, come on, I'm just trying to be humorous. <laughs> All right, we're not talking about the humoral bone. We're gonna be talking about the hips. So you have your hips, right? And if you go into where your waist is, and you push down, you'll feel that bony block right there, right? Now those are called what's, your, what's called your iliac crest. Now your iliac crest is gonna go all the way up and then you can feel your hands on it. And this is important to see if, if your hips are a little bit offline. Now from the iliac crest, you're gonna follow that bone and then you're gonna go down and you'll feel a little bump right there. And that bump is what we call the ASIS. And that spot's important because it's a nice landmark for you to look at to see if the hips are uh, twisted or misaligned. And it's important to know because the rectus femoris in, uh, originates there and it goes down into the knee. So that was more anterior. Let's move a little bit more lateral to the hips. Now, if you get the palm of your hand, you put it on that iliac crest and then you slide it down your leg and you feel a nice bump. This is kind of the widest part of your hips. And that bump right there is called the greater trochanter. Now you can tell you're on the greater trochanter because when you're here, what you can do is you can internally or externally rotate your hip or your leg like this, like you're squishing a bug, and you'll feel that greater trochanter bump into your hand, bump in and bump out, bump in and bump out. So that's the greater trochanter. Now we're gonna move more posterior and what we're gonna palpate for it is what's called the sitz bone or the ischial tuberosity. Now this is the bone that you sit on, which is why it's called the sit bone. When palpating the ischial tuberosity, I think it's very important that you explain to the patient exactly what it is that you're palpating and why. It's the attachment for the hamstrings, and it's going to be very important at the angle that you palpate at. I'm going to put my forearm down here inferiorly and actually trace the line of the hamstring until I get to the attachment, which should be the ischial tuberosity. So as my force comes here, using my hypothenar eminence, I'm going to get right into the gluteal cleft and immediately I feel a protuberance right there underneath my hand. That is the ischial tuberosity and the attachment of those hamstrings. All right, so we went from the hips, we went to the greater trochanter on the femur, and now let's go down to the knee. Wait, that knee or this knee? Now what we're going to do is we're going to follow down and where the femur associates with the tibia, the shin bone we call it, right? We're going to be looking at the knee right here. Now when we're going on the femur, we have the most lateral and most, me sorry, we have the most medial and lateral parts of the femur and those are called the medial and lateral condyles. Now what you can do is you can do a little pincer grip, grip your thigh, and then you'll feel the most lateral part of your thigh right there. And that is the medial and lateral condyle of the hip or of the, of the, of the femur, right? Now from there, if you go to the middle, you find the kneecap, right? What's called the patella. Now, if you go down from the patella, you just go a little bit like an inch or so, you'll feel a little springy spot. It's not hard. This is what's called the patellar tendon. It feels kind of like a tendon, right? And then from the patellar tendon, we're gonna go down and now we're on the tibia bone. And you're gonna be on this bony prominence, what's called the tibial tuberosity. So if there were any bony landmarks that were not referenced in this video and you would like to know a little bit more about that, make sure you put it in the comments because y'all know I listen to your feedback. So that's pretty much the main bony landmarks that I'll be addressing in this video. But again, in the description, you have timestamps, landmarks, and PhysioU video links all there. Powerful app.
three thumbs up. So I hope this video helped inspire some self change to have fun while learning your palpations and your bony landmarks in your anatomy and kinesiology or your physical therapy class. High five. Change people, change people. That's why we live for change people. Have a great one, you guys.